at our hearts. In our various nations and locations where you have placed us, cause us to arise and bring fruit that is worthy of repentance. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. We know <clears throat> that what we cannot do for ourselves, you are going to do it even as we continue to hold your hand together. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank God for bringing us to the conclusion of this meeting tonight. word of God as a means of being rooted and being built up in him. We look at the prayer life of a disciple as he said, pray in the Holy Ghost, building up yourself on your most holy faith. And this morning, as we were looking at the message that our brother Tewas had brought, we have seen the fact that God will not allow us to leave a hoof, not even a small thing, are we going to live in Egypt. Our deliverance is total and must take our journey without looking back. We must be men and women that are familiar to sit at the feet of the Lord so that our service can be acceptable to him. And this evening, as we looked at the seminar that our brother brought, dealing with the matter of a disciple serving the Lord, laboring, uh, living and laboring for eternity. Now time has come for us to conclude. Let me ask you to return back to the passage that we have been studying, Colossians chapter 2. And I'm going to read it one more time. Verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, and verse 10. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught. Abandon therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. May the Lord again bring his word to your heart, even at this point, as we conclude this year's SSF to the glory and praise of our Lord Jesus. Now, what are our matching instructions? As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. As we have therefore received Christ, even Jesus the Lord, so walk, regulate your lives and conduct yourselves in union with and in conformity to him. We noted that the reason why we are talking about developing your roots and being rooted, being built up in him, is so that you can walk with God. It's so that your work with God can be acceptable, can be unbroken, can be progressive, and can be fruitful. And so, as we take this charge this night, as you have therefore received the Lord, walk ye in him regulate your lives and conduct yourselves in union with Jesus Christ and in conformity to him. Now, 
while our brother was leading us in the morning, he had led us to read Psalm 1. Can I ask you to repeat and return to Psalm 1? Because we are looking at our matching instructions. As you have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him. Regulate your lives and conduct yourself in union with him and in conformity to him. What will it mean for you to walk, you know, with the Lord? Uh, when we read Psalm 1 in the morning or in the afternoon, we read it first and foremost as if to lay a further emphasis. But tonight, because the church coming to you is walk in him, walk in union with him. As you have received Jesus Christ the Lord, walk in him. Regulate your lives. Conduct yourselves. Everything you do, let it be in conformity to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Psalm 1, I read it again. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. If you are going to walk with Jesus, you cannot also walk at the same time in the counsel of the ungodly. If you will be keeping, you know, in step with Jesus as his disciple, as one that has received Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, as the rock of ages, the foundation for your living, then you cannot walk when somebody is a bite from walking with God. When you begin to draw back in walking, in your personal walk with God, this is the progression that you will see. Say the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The first issue when men begin to backslide is that they begin to receive counsel, to receive advice, to receive the principles from the ungodly. If you are going to walk and regulate your life with Jesus Christ, we have said in the course of this meeting that the word of God the word of his grace is the word that God had given to give you light. It's a lamp for your feet. You cannot seek to walk with God and begin to allow your life to be guided by the counsel of the ungodly. As you have received Jesus Christ the Lord, you can no longer be taking advice. You cannot be receiving counseling from those whose life is not focusing on Christ Jesus. You can flock with men whose result of their life is a denier of Christ's life. As you are going from this meeting, I want to ask you, any friend, any man, any counselor whose life is only point you pointing you to ungodliness, you can no longer walk in their counsel. And the first thing you are going to do from this night is to cut it off. Cut off any man, any woman, any counselor whose counsel is pointing you directly against the will of God for your life. Blessed will you be when you do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now you see the counsel of the ungodly is first and foremost uh, insinuation, suggestions, ideas that have been brought into your mind. That's why the Bible is saying in verse 8 of the passage we have read Colossians 2, see to it that no one carries you off as spoiled or makes you yourself captive by his so-called philosophy and intellectualism, vain deceit, 
I do fancies and plain nonsense. Following human tradition, men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world, crude notions following the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and disregarding the teachings of Christ the Lord. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You do not sit down to begin to consume the philosophy, the intellectualism, the idle fancies, the plain nonsense that the ungodly is, is dishing out to you. You are not going to start following or working in the council of human tradition, human ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world. You are not going to begin to regulate your life with crude notions following the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and disregarding the teachings of Christ the Messiah. So if you are going to walk with him, if you are going to regulate your life in union with Christ and you are going to walk in conformity to him, the first thing you are going to do is you will be working according to his counsel. You become ungodly when it is the counsel of the ungodly that you are operating with. Your life can never be higher than the counsels you are receiving. The man that is feeding you with his counsel is the man that determines and regulates how your life will look like. So as you go from this meeting, the way to be rooted, to be firmly built up in Christ Jesus, to abound in the faith, and to grow in what God has taught you, is to deliberately walk in the counsel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there are people that are following after Jesus, whose life is reflecting Christ to you, it is such people's kind of counsel when you saw that it is congruent with the scripture. That is the kind of thing you will walk by. Blessed is that man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now let me pick that up again because it's critical for us. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly. Following their advice, their plans and purposes. When we say you are not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, we are saying that you will not walk, you will not live, you will not operate in the counsel of the ungodly, you will not follow their advice, you will not follow their plans, and you will not follow their purposes. If you are intending that as you have therefore received Jesus Christ as your Lord, and you want to be rooted, you want to grow up, you want to become formidable, you want to become a tree of righteousness, you want to become fruitful, and you want to wear the crown of glory at the end of your journey. Then I want to say to you, you cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And when I say you cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly, we mean you cannot walk you cannot live, you cannot regulate your life with the counsel, with the advice, with the plans, with the purposes, with the philosophy of the ungodly. Now, what again does that scripture note for us as we go ahead? He said, blessed is that man who does not stand in the path where sinners walk. Let me pick it up again. He said, Blessed is that man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners. You see, the first is walking. 
according to the counsel of the ungodly. But you see, when you are walking, permit me to say, when you are walking through a place, it shows that you are passing through, you are not likely to stay. But you see, the next thing we saw is that this man is now standing. Is now standing passively. As if something is interesting in what he's seeing around. When you stop walking with God and you are standing still, you are standing still in the way of sinners. You are standing still in the things that sinners are doing. You are about to lose your ground. You are about to walk into trouble. You are about to miss the faith. When our brother just finished, he said, Paul said, I have fortified. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now, if you are going to win your battle, and if you are going to become what God has promised to make you, then you cannot stand in the way of sinners. Now, and I was trying to look at what does it mean to stand in the way of sinners. It means you are becoming inactive and you are becoming, uh, what do I call it now? You see, when somebody is, a, is, a, is a showing you something and you stood like this, passively watching, submissive, yourself to all their display. You have forgotten where you are going. You are now standing in the, in the way of sinners. Sinners are beginning to form your company and you find yourself standing in their midst. Now, when you want to walk with Jesus, as you have therefore received him, we want to say to you that you don't stand in the way, in the path of sinners. You don't stand where sinners walk. You don't allow them to advertise their goods unto you. You don't allow them to come to you with all their superficialities and making you to admire it. As you have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, are you a young man? Are you a student? Are you a young lady? You do not stand in the path, in the way of sinners. You don't follow them to go and watch, you know, a, a film, a movie that sinners are enjoying. You will have stopped your own focus to begin to concentrate on the things of sinners. Now, but you see, the man that is walking, perhaps I just walking through then he saw something of interest and he stood still to keep watching. The next thing is that they say, you have been standing for long. If you are interested in what we are doing, why don't you take a seat? Why don't you take a seat? That's the progressiveness into backsliding. Working in the council of the ungodly, then standing, standing, in the way of sinners, and suddenly they offer you their seat. Now sit down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. My dear brother, my dear sister, as we finish this meeting, as a disciple of the Lord Jesus, as one who is getting to be rooted and to be built up in Christ, may I say, Walk in him. Regulate your life in him. And because you want to walk in Christ, you want to conform to him, you want to be in union with him, and you want to grow up in him, you want to be built up in him, you want to find expression in Christ Jesus, then I would like to say to you, you cannot be walking in the cancer of the ungodly, you cannot stand in the way and in the path of sinners, and you cannot sit down where sinners, where mockers, where discomfort gather. This is the first practical charge 
I want to give you as we conclude this meeting. Can you regulate your life? Can you watch where you are going? Can you make sure that from this meeting, from this night, you are saying, I am going to be rooted in Christ. I am going to grow and become built up in him. I'm going to abound in the faith and in the things that I have been taught. And with thanksgiving, I will run my race to the end. Now, the second verse of Psalm 1, again, I speak about what this man who, is, who has received Jesus Christ the Lord and who is walking in him, who is having his roots firmly and deeply planted in Christ, fixed and founded in him, being continually, continually built up in him, becoming increasingly more confirmed and established in the faith. What is he supposed to be doing? Verse 2 said, but his delight, his delight is in the word of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Our brother Dennis already spoke about that. Say, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. So we are saying that this man that will be blessed in his work with God, this man that will grow in his work with God, is delight is in the word of God. His joy is to find the word of God. Is to, he said, he said, I found your word and I ate them. And it is sweeter in my mouth than the honey in the honeycomb. Now, when your delight, when your joy, when your satisfaction, when your hunger is in the word of God, and when you meditate on the word of God day and night, I heard Brother Dennis saying to us, he said, the word of God must become our devotion, must become our preoccupation, must be the object of our meditation. He said, when you do that, you will be growing your life. You'll be growing in this new life, in this Christ life, and you become more and more conformed to his image. As we go from here, may your delight, may your excitement, may what is making you tick, making you feel high, may it be in the word of God. May the law of the Lord be what you meditate upon day and night. Joshua chapter one, chapter one says, and you shall meditate upon this word day and night. And in so doing, you will make your way prosperous. For you to be a blessed man, for you to become enviable, for you to become, you know, a very fruitful man, you are going to regulate your life. You are going to, you know, conform your life in union with Christ and in conformity to him by making his word your delight, by making his law your object of meditation day and night. As you go from this meeting, I charge you that there is no other way by which a child of God will become all that God wants him to be except by giving himself to this word of life. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, that proceed out of the mouth of God, does a man live. Now, this man that we are talking about, our brother dealt with it. In the morning he said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And we have noted that that river, that river, the river of water we are talking about, Jesus said, Whosoever believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I was speaking about the Holy Spirit, which those who believe in him were to receive. Is, are you a tree 
Are you like that tree that is planted that we have spoken about over and over by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season? We are trusting God that as we go from here, each one of us will be fruitful. You'll be bringing forth fruit in the right season. He said, your leaves shall not wither. And whatever you are doing, God will make you. Your growth in Christ Jesus must be a continuum. You are continually, continually being built up in Christ Jesus. As I draw this meeting to a close, the last point I wanted to note that we, we, we wanted to go with is that as you are being continually built up in Christ, you are becoming increasingly more confirmed and more established in the faith. Confirmed and more established more and more in the faith. Just as you have been taught the word of God, abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. Now, what is my final charge to you, brother? See to it. This will be your responsibility. See to it that no one carries you off. No one makes you a captive because of his so-called eye-sandy intellectualism. You will meet people that will be speaking big, big, big things. There are even people that you would think that they are preachers, but what they are saying has no connection with reality of following Jesus. They may be appearing to bring high-sounding doctrines, but these doctrines that does not increase your conformity to Christ, it does not increase your fruitfulness of, of producing Christ's character, and of becoming fishers of men for God, all such high sandy intellectualism, see to it that you are not captured by them. See to it that you, become, you, you don't become a captive of such things. See to it that I do fancies, high sandy, plain nonsense, high level of intellectualism, solving and... Uh, analyzing and uh, dividing and polluting the word of God, you may say, oh no, that's a new revelation. May I say to you, there's nothing new under heaven. Anything that does not help you to be more and more conformed to Christ, you can, uh, you can throw it aside. Anything that does not point you squarely to the man of Calvary, you can let it go. Anything that is bringing back to you Human ideas, crude notions, elemental teachings of the universe that disregard the teachings of Christ Jesus the Messiah, you can put it aside so that your work with God, your work with Jesus will not be uneven. You will not be going up and down, up and down, up and down. Your life will be able to follow a regular path even though our path may look narrow, but we know it's stable, it's steady, it's progressive, and it's leading us to heaven. May God help you to note that and to grow in that in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, this Jesus that you have received, it pleased the Father that all the fullness should in him dwell. There is nothing you will ever need from now till you reach eternity that you will not find sufficiently provided in Christ Jesus. As you go from this meeting, I commend you to the Lord Jesus Christ. I commend you to the word of his grace. We commend you to his lifestyle. We commend you to be his disciple. He said, you are my disciple indeed, if you continue in my word. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. As we pray together, wherever you are located, don't forget that the reason why God is planting you, why God is bringing manure to your life, 
why God is exposing you to discipleship is that you might be fruitful. So I read this final passage that I would like you to take note as we go from here, even in this meeting. John chapter 15. I want all of you to please come with me to John 15. And that will be our final passage. And I'll be praying with you, trusting God to help you. In verse, in verse, um, in verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, then verse 16. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, and I have loved you, continue in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you will continue in my love even as I have kept my father's commandment, that you continue in his love. These things, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy in you may continue, and that your joy may be full. Brother, sister, as you go, what will glorify God, and what will confirm that you are a true disciple, is that you are bringing forth fruit. Say, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. We want to see the fruit of the Spirit abounding in your life. In the community where you are living, Christ's life must be producing fruits, fruit of godliness, fruit that is meat uh, for repentance. Then your life must also be reproducing in other lives. As God has brought you to his kingdom, God is expecting that through your life, others will be brought to the kingdom. As you are being discipled, that you might go also and make other disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. As we talked about laboring and living and laboring for eternity, we are looking at what you are going to do that Heaven will remember you for. What will you do that when you leave the earth, we shall talk about concerning you? He said, these things I'm saying to you, that my joy may continue in you, and that your joy may be full. Verse 16, finally he said, you did not choose me. You did not choose me. Are you seeing this? He said, you have not chosen me. Verse 16. But I chose you. And I have appointed you. That you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name. He may give it unto you. As we conclude. Don't forget. You are not the one that chose him. He chose you. Mercy of God has brought you to where you are. The grace of God has located you. God has been so gracious that he has brought you out of the dungeon of sin. He has brought you out of the entanglement of Satan. And he has brought you out of the, the emptiness of the world system that you might come to know him and you might belong to him and that his life and his spirit might dwell in you. Now, because I chose you, I have appointed you, I have ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. As we bow to pray, releasing you to go from this year's meeting. Go and be fruitful. Go and multiply. Go and establish the purpose of God. You yourself being rooted, ever growing, ever being built up in him, being more and more confirmed and established in the faith. Go and be fruitful. And as we are watching, looking forward to his appearing, we know the trumpet can sound anytime from now. 
we cancelled you and charged you. Prepare for his appearing. Remain rapturable. The first flight to heaven is the flight you must catch. Don't ever play around among sinners. Don't sit among the scorners and the scornful. Don't, don't walk according to the counsel of the ungodly. The Lord Almighty will watch over your life and Jesus Christ and the high priest and the bishop of our souls who himself laid down his life and shed his blood so that you might not perish but you may have this life and live this life and manifest this life and be productive in this life. It will keep you. It will watch over you. It will perfect all that concerns you. We commend you to his grace. We commend you to his word. We commend you to his keeping power. He will keep you from falling. And when the trumpet shall sound, wherever you are, make sure we meet upstairs. Make sure your name is not found wanting when we get there. Your seat has been prepared by God. Don't be like Judas. He has obtained a portion of this ministry, but he went and purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, get rooted, continually built up in him, firmly fixed, and deeply established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein, overflowing with thanksgiving, recognizing that it's a great privilege to be a child of God. May the Lord go with you. May his face shine upon you. It's possible that you join this, this meeting this last time. We have been coming with a long journey. But I believe God brought you here even now and it's not too late. The little you have heard since you joined the meeting is sufficient for you to make a decision. I want to ask you, are you regulating your life according to the counsel of the ungodly? Are you standing in the path and in the ways of sinners? Are you sitting in the midst, in the club, in the seat of discomfort and discorners? Are you sitting where all they are discussing about is immorality? Are your friends, those that have made up their mind that they just want to live life anyhow, and even if they go to hell, they don't mind? Are you keeping company since you went to school with a girl whose virtue has been scattered in life? Who are your friends? If you are listening to this instruction, this moment, and you have not made your life right with Christ, don't allow us to finish this meeting before you make your decision. Don't allow us to close this meeting before you rush into the kingdom of God this evening. Would you like to bow your head as we pray together? While all those that have followed this meeting, I want you to lift up your hand in the presence of our said, Lord, I put my hand in your hand. Forever I will walk with you. And until I see you in glory, I will not look back. And for that young man, that young lady, even if you are an old person, even if you are in the hospital and you are hearing us, and you realize that you have not made your life right with Jesus, this is the time to do it. This is the time to do it. Whether you are by your bedside or you are in your sitting room or you are in a company where they are listening to the word of God together, you cannot be looking left and right. It is you God is talking to. You can't share the root of your life with another person. If you do not have root in yourself, you are a parasite and there is no hope for parasite. Jesus said, sinners, as servants of sins. Anybody who is committing sin is a slave of sin. And slaves do not abide in the house forever. 
If you say you are in church, but you are a slave of sin, sincerely speaking, you, you will not abide in God's family forever. A time is coming when the sheep will be separated from the goats. And all those whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, who have not washed their garment in the blood of the Lamb, who are still living and stained with sin, will be separated, will be cast out. They will be cast out into outer darkness where there is gnashing of teeth. Can I ask you tonight, if you have not made your life right with God, yes, you have kept company with believers, but you are not a believer yourself. You have attended churches, you went to Christianity, but you never came to Christ. You may pay tithe in church, but God does not have your name in the book. Can I ask you right away, don't allow this meeting to finish. Don't allow this night to pass until you make your life right with God. Wherever you are, bow your head. If you can, lift up your right hand. If nothing is wrong with your right hand, please lift it up. But if you can raise your right hand, raise the other hand and say, Lord Jesus, I cannot save myself by myself. I want you to please put your hand in my hand and pull me out of the dungeon, out of the merry clay, out of the entanglement, and draw me to yourself. Jesus, give me a new heart that I also I may walk with you. As you bow in prayer, we will pray for you right away. And if you are in any place around where our brothers and sisters are, do not hesitate to tell them, I made a decision. I asked Jesus to come into my life. They will help you with some immediate materials and they will bring you cancer that will help you stand for God. In any of the countries where you are, just signify or write a note to us. They will advertise all the email addresses and make sure what God has started in your life now, you don't allow it to dissipate again. May the Lord help you to be built up, to be rooted in Christ, to be established in the faith, and to abound with thanksgiving, bearing fruit, fruit, fruit that bring glory to God, fruit that eternity we celebrate you for. Shall we pray together? Father in heaven, we thank you for how much you have led us and how you have carried us over this period. We thank you for all those who participated in this meeting, and particularly today, those who came. They just heard and they joined this meeting. Even when we are about to close, I hear you say, no, this man must come into the kingdom. This woman must find a space in my bosom. Like the woman with issue of blood, she only touched the hem of your garment and her problem, her issues, finish immediately. This night, Lord, we are praying for all those who are making decisions, those who have lifted up their hands or they are kneeling down by their bedside and say, Lord Jesus, step into my life. I have been walking according to the counsel of the ungodly. I have been standing in the path of sinners and I found myself sitting among the scornful people of this world I found myself under the peer pressure of those who are scornful, scorning the word of God all the time. Holy Spirit, I'm praying that as they bow before you, step into their lives. Please break every yoke of sin, every yoke of Satan, every yoke of oppression on their lives. Set them free that they may walk with you. You promise us in your word a new heart will I give you. A new spirit will I create within you. I will take away from you the heart of stone. This evening, Father, we are praying. All those who are crying to you and say, change my life, change my life. Lord, change their heart. Give them a new heart right now. You are the Lord that performs that surgical operation of changing hearts. Do it for us. Though we are not able to see them direct, but I know your presence is there with them. Put your hand on their lives, O oh God. 
Let the shadow of your glory come upon them. And Father, thou who are able to save to the uttermost, please arise on our behalf for them and draw them to yourself and save them to, your, to, to the uttermost in the name of Jesus Christ. And for several of our brothers and sisters who have followed this meeting since we started on Thursday, now we are about to finish. I ask, Lord, that your grace will come upon their lives. I ask, Lord, that their roots in you will continue to shoot deeper and deeper. And that the grace of God will continue to build them up higher and higher. I ask, Lord, that they will be more and more firm, firmly and deeply established in the faith. I ask, Lord, that they will remain unmovable. They will remain steadfast. They will remain abounding, not only in the joy of the Lord, but in the work of the Lord. I ask, Lord, that there will be assurance in their hearts that their labor for you is not in vain. Holy Spirit, please breathe upon us all. Breathe upon our brothers in the Francophone nations and cause this work among them to increase, to multiply. And that from now again, we will see a wave of revival among the nations of the earth. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.